Good morning from a very rainy Queens, New York. I'm here for a very short trip, and I just remember that two years ago I made a video about a Bukharian restaurant in Tel Aviv. If anyone remembers, the restaurant called Hanan Margilan. It's one of my favorite restaurants in the world, honestly, but I got a comment from one of you guys saying, great video. Also, you have to take a trip to my hometown of Queens, New York. We have some of the best Jewish Uzbek Bukharian restaurants. So, that's what we're here to do today. Let's figure out where we gotta go. It's pretty crazy how you can step on the New York subway, ride out like 20 minutes, and you already feel like you're in Eastern Europe. It's a beautiful room in here, but I guess they're closed, so let's go check another place out. Like, what would you recommend most that I try one thing from here? A black man. Two things. Two things. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Tea? Yes. Check it out. So as I'm waiting for my food, they give me this tea in a very nice traditional pot here. Tada Thank you. Alright, check this out. This is crazy. This is really, really crazy. Handmade noodles, you can tell, with beef chunks and I think other vegetables, tomato. This is incredible. Amazing soup. This is incredible. Honestly, compared to Hanan Margilan, I'd say similar quality, maybe a nicer ambiance here. And next up, we have this samsa, which is the pastry with the meat in it. Here we go, samsa. That's easily my favorite. That's incredible. Check it out. Just like Hanan Margilan, honestly, better. <laughs> wow. Wedding. Uh -huh. The pub in New York? Okay. Yeah. $15. Tell me where you're going to get kosher food at that quality. Soup with bread, with tea, with the meat pocket, with the samsa. 15 bucks. That's a bargain. So the restaurant's called Haifa. It's glatt kosher. And... Here you go. It's honestly a disgusting day to be out here. Disgusting day to make a video in general, but I'm happy that we went to that restaurant. The service was amazing. They've only been there for a week. So I was very surprised. The place had a lot of movement. There seemed to be a lot of people who are supporting the business right off the bat. And that's kind of how things work around here in these communities. There's 60,000 uh, Bukharians here. Bukharian Jews who want to support each other, who know each other. So the guy just told me to head down to another restaurant and go try the food there and ask for Boris. So that's what we're going to do. Adam. I can already tell this place is legit because everyone here is either speaking Russian or they got that thick Russian accent when they speak Hebrew. So this is going to be interesting, guys. Oh. Put that with some oil. We got our samsa. We got lagman again. They hooked me up with an entire scorching hot piece of Uzbeki, Bukharian, whatever you want to call it, bread. This is honestly a dream come true. Check it out. You got yourself some of that Uzbeki bread? Boy, are you in good hands. I did not ask for this at all. I did not expect it the slightest bit. But this looks crazy. I don't even know what it is. Obviously a kebab, but round balls, like meatballs on the skewer with little cherry tomatoes charred up and a bunch of onion.
This is one of the most delicious things that I will ever eat. Whoever told me to come to Queens to eat Bukharian food, I want to thank you. They still got the Cyrillic writing here. I got the picture of the rabbi. He's the boss? Yeah, big boss. My partner. Your partner. Hi, nice to meet you. Adam. Oh, thank you. The food was amazing. Oh, you like it? Yeah. And where are you from? From, it was from Russia. Usually from Uzbekistan. He uses this just to make the design? Yes, to do you see Just to make the holes. Yes. They now it's professional. They're professional. They're professional. Like Uzbeki. Like Uzbeki. But he speaks Russian now. Really? Yes. Talk to him. Govoriš po ruski? Ja, da. Odkuda ti? Odkuda? Guatemala. Guatemala? Oh, yo hablo español, pero no hablo ruso. So we got all the guys working back here. Not everyone's from Uzbekistan, but the owner here taught them how to work the ovens, how to prepare all the Bukhari foods. So these guys are professionals. We got our man here shaving off the bottom of these samsas that just came fresh out of the tandoor. And then we got our main man with the breads. This is some of my favorite bread that I've ever tried in my life. The Uzbeki bread. It's incredible. <laughs> We got the thing that gets it off the wall. We scrape the bread off the wall with this and we gotta catch it into this thing. So I'm gonna go with my left hand to scrape it off. There we go. Okay, good, good. I'm a uh, yeah, Uzbek. Yeah, Uzbek. I'm Uzbeki now. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> so I just got introduced to this guy, very old guy. He's gonna take me to the museum the Bukharian Museum here in Queens, right across the street. So I'm gonna wait for him to finish up eating and we're gonna go learn a little bit about the Bukharian culture. Looks like we just made it to some office, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing here. You can read this. What's it say here? Here it says, those people who left their country, but they tell you we left forever, don't believe it because we leave our cities after we pass away. And until we are alive, we still have our cities, places where we were born in our mind. We haven't left it. It is in our heart. Before people enter the museum, they come here, open it. The, go up to the end, then you will see uh, where oh. I make lecture. No, no, look. Yeah. Go and see everything, then you come back. Okay. Go to the, look, the map. Okay, and, yeah, sure. This is crazy. So, Aaron and I have an incredible, um, difficulty communicating with each other because he doesn't really speak 100% of any of the languages that I speak. But with that being said, it's very nice of him to take time out of his day to come here and show me the museum. So right now, it looks like nothing but a parking lot, literally a garage here, you got cars parked here. And the back room here, he told me to come check it out because we can already see there's a whole theme going on here. So you got a bunch of chairs. This is where Aaron gives lectures. This is the Bukharian Jewish community. And you can see all these pictures of uh, old Bukharians. Check this out. This is amazing, guys. You can see they really want to hold on to their culture here with all these memories and all these paintings. 
you got even the traditional outfits and there are all these slots for cigars right here that's pretty cool you even have a prayer book here which also has um, translations into Russian you got the Bukharian times I take people here I give them introduction tell them what is which part of the world we came from about our tradition give them sort of a lecture introduction questions answers and then they come to the museum oh wow i told when one of my friends how i brought these things from central asia he painted a picture it's me bringing things from central asia wow it is me, my wife, my daughter, but this gentleman, I want you to, his picture be here. here. This, this guy man, right here. This, Jan Moshe. I want you to know, to have it in the picture. He is Jewish. He gave me this territory. I do not pay rent. He just gave, once he heard it is a museum, if it was business, he would charge money from me. But I said, this is the museum, the history of our people, he says, free. And he gave me this territory. Jan Moshe, I want you, when you show the museum, show who helped me. So when did everyone come to New York, all these Bukharian Jews? Which years did they come? A few people came, maybe, 80, 70, uh, 100 years ago, just few. But mass exodus became, began in the late 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, when there was ma mass exodus of Russian Jews from the Soviet Union. So read this loudly. I'm not afraid to die pass away, what am I afraid of? To disappear from this world without leaving any trace. This is the trace of my people. This is the backyard. Most of the Bukharian Jews live not in apartments, in houses. The backyard will look like this, where we bake bread, you see. We didn't go to restaurant. We, we have a wedding, 100, 200 people, you make dish over there, look, the pan, big one. The wine, the problem was kosher meat. Every people had, look here, sheep, chicken. So the meat should be kosher. The wine should be kosher. We had our own vineyard. We made wine and put it here. Where did you get all of these items? I brought it from uh, Uzbekistan, Central Asia. From uh, you just knew people, you spoke to people. Do you think they have it in America? Here? No. I brought everything. I went, I go there every year. Every year I spend five, ten thousand dollars to go back, and that's why I say, whoever comes, I say, can you help me? Because Got it. The government doesn't help me. I don't have uh, any what you grants. I, my friends, some help me. I, the family money. I got it. But. I have every right to write their private collection of Mr. Aron Aronov. I didn't write it because I gave this museum to my community, to my people. That's why I wrote Bukharian Jewish Congress, the World Bukharian Jewish Congress. I am just exact. I am not only the executive director because, you see, I am, you think I am the executive director. People think so. You take care of the place. Nobody. I, I'm, I do it myself. I cannot hire. I have to pay salary. I have no money. I do it myself. My daughter helped me. You see? Yeah. 86 years old guy. What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is outside. How it was inside? Oh, wow. This is like the inside of a Bukharian home. The cradle for baby. You see the cradle? Over there. Wow. 
A little Bukharian baby. My friend relatives come to my place. We didn't we didn't have hotel. They stay in my place. So if even we have bed, we give the bed to the guests and I sleep on the floor. Like this. And this there was no heat. You see the table covered yeah. with blank? The pit is there, the charcoal is there, so it is very warm under this. Are there any homes here in Queens that still no, have this no, design? No. No, I wanted to make it, but I, I couldn't. I, it was my dream. It was my plan to do it, but unfortunately, no. No, only at the museum. So, if our children want to know how we were, when I say we were sleeping on the floor, I show them. I bring. If I was late for lunch, my mother put it one plate, food covered with another plate wrap it in a, some, something and put it between those blankets. So when I come home, my lunch is still warm. Bukharin Jews had many children, 10, 15 children. In Russia, one child, two child, in Moscow, Leningrad. Bukharian people, five, six, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16 children. You see? This is one family. They got as many as 17 children in this photo. And you can see the traditional outfits. You know this? What is it? Yeah, you got a record player. I show it to my children. Because for them it is very interesting, because they have computers, when they see it, when you tell them it's one, when you show, it is different. That's amazing. They, when the children come, they, with such interest, they look, sometimes they call me, Aaron, we bring some children for one hour. I say, not more. But children don't want to leave, they want to stay here and see, they like to see this atmosphere. I really resonate with everything that's going on here. Not because I'm Bukharian, I'm not. But when I went to Morocco and I got to see where my family came from, it was very powerful. It was a very powerful experience for me. So this is crazy. There's a basement here in Queens, New York, where anyone of Bukharian origin, or anyone at all for that matter, can come and really see what their culture is all about, really get a catch, get, get a little taste of the vibe. Who is this guy? Who's that guy? You don't know? No. Him? Adam, you're a illiterate person. That did guy, I don't know. Did you go to school? I did, yeah. And you don't know the guy? What's his name? I don't I, recognize I, I wonder with whom I'm dealing. <laughs> Boris said me a person, you want to show the museum and you don't know the person? I want to learn. No, no kidding. You really don't know? I don't recognize this picture. Karl Marx. Karl Marx. Marx, Marx. I, yeah. You know what was his Jewish name? Mordechai. Mordechai. When he was circumcised. He made the theory of communism. It is he. Ah, Marx, Marxism. Yeah, that's, that's the guy. That's him. Yeah, and you first time in your life you see him? <laughs> you are completely I'm not so, I'm not, no. <laughs> So the Soviets brought a lot of problems. First of all, they confiscated all our houses. They took all, away all the gold, all the money. And my grandfather was a very rich man. They took his house uh, and they didn't give, him, didn't give him smaller one. He bought another small one. Many, when Russians, why I say Russia was good? Because we lived in the Muslim world. The situation was very restricted. But when the Russians came, our levels, were, we were, had more rights, prosperity. We had uh, businessmen, we had uh, uh, commercial people, salesmen, we had banks, we were bankers, uh, members of banks, and we pro prosper, we pro but the Soviets confiscated everything and they didn't allow to uh, 
follow the tradition, the religious tradition. God forbid if they know, they will uh, fire me from work. Outside in the street were Soviet people. Inside the house were Jewish. Because nobody watches us. We didn't have trucks. In old days, we had this wagon. Look, the horse. You see where is the horse? Yeah, the horse went here. Like that, like in that photo. This guy made donation. $3,000. I thought you're also a banker, millionaire. No, I'm poor. And so, I, I say, I want to just to check. I thought maybe God sent me another. Uh, but uh, now I understood that you zero. <laughs> he gave me $3,000. He gave you 3000 Why? I went to say it brought this by airplane. Look. How do you get this in the airplane? Cargo. Cargo plane. Uh, a lot of money. This man is Muslim. But why I put his picture here? He wrote a poem when the Hitler invaded Russia and wanted to kill the Jews. He said, you want to kill the Jews? Kill me. I am also Jew. But he's not Jewish. He's Muslim. He said, if you want to kill Jews, first kill me. Then you... And such a poem against Hitler. I put it his name here. What was his name? Gafur Gulam. We left Russia not because of Muslim people. We left Russia because of the communist system. With Muslim people, with Uzbek, we live like brothers and sisters. That's why we go there. By the way, there are many cities in Central Asia, not a single Jew lives there. Who takes care of our cemeteries? Muslim people, Uzbek and Tajik. Madeleine Albright, when she was in Central in Central Asia, she says, if the relationship between Muslim and Jew in Middle East is like it is in Uzbekistan, there would be peace there. But they are fighting. If I see a Muslim guy, Muslim, I, I give him a hug. He says, Aaron, you are my brother. We lived so friendly. By the way, why we were Muslim people friends? Because we had common enemy, Muslim people, Uzbek. And Jewish had one enemy, Communist Party. They also had circumcision, their own. They were not allowed. They were persecuted for that. So that united us because we had the enemy for Muslim people and for Jewish was the Communist Party. Wow. The instruments. What's this one called? It's like an oud. Aaron, I have a question. Yes. You know, I'm Jewish. I see a lot of other Jews who came to the US or they went to Europe and they know they're Polish or Moroccan or Yemenite or whatever, but they don't really hold the tradition like I see here in Bukharian community. We are very strict. Even the Soviets couldn't break us. <laughs> the Soviets, the Jews in Moscow, Leningrad gave up. No circumcision, no synagogue in Moscow, Leningrad. In Uzbekistan, everybody had circumcision. Pesach, matzah, no bread, kosher meat. We were very, very strict. These are the garments of the woman, right? The Bukharian yeah. traditional yeah, outfits. Look. Is this for the wedding? Kala? Look, how they were dressed. All parts of the body clothes. Very traditional. You see? What, um, would I have been able to tell a difference between uh, the Jewish and the Muslim? Uh, yeah. I, I, not you, but I can. We have different. This is a veil, paranja. Muslim people had like this, blue. You see blue one? Yeah, the blue one. This is Jewish. The pink. 
why we wear had to veil our face because if you have a beautiful girl and Emir of Bukhara will see it, he will take it into his harem. You will be, he, she will be one of the concubines of his harem. So when our daughters go out, we say, close your face. At home, they open the face. What is it? Kippa. Kippa. Now I will show you Bukharian Kippa. Bukharian Jewish Kippa. Go and look. Yeah, wow. These are kippas. That's a kippa. This is for men. What about ladies? Why don't you ask me about ladies? Oh, they had their head coverings too. It looks similar, these ones. Huh? For you. Y yeah? Thank you. That's so nice. Our own. Gave me a little gift, Bukharian kippa. For those of you who aren't familiar, the kippa or the yarmulke is what the Jews wear on their head. It's a sign that God is above them. It would be wow. Easier for you to speak about. Amazing. Thank you so much. No, 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 no. Big don't, one. Don't, don't, don't. You. Like this, yeah. I'll go to the backyard. Now I'm fully. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to Uzbekistan.